Hey guys, welcome back. And I have spent the better part of six hours working on a new, easy to use space shuttle design that I think is probably the easiest space shuttle I have ever flown. Mainly because all of the other typical space shuttle designs, I don't see how they work. I don't see how other people get them to work because I just can't do it. I can't get them into orbit to save my life. But this space shuttle design actually is quite a lot easier than all the others. You don't have any angling of the engines, and you don't have any boosters attached to this external tank here. I actually decided to integrate the solid rocket boosters into the wings of the shuttle itself, so that way you have a little bit better balance of power. So I didn't actually have to um, angle these engines inward like you would on a normal space shuttle. Although this engine is a little bit too powerful and I had to lower it down to 80% thrust. By the way, the um, two mods that I'm using that are required for this space shuttle are KW Rocket Tree and the Asteroid Day mod, which gives you these bigger solar panels down here. So today I'm going to try and fly it into space for you guys, and hopefully um, I can actually land it, because I am not very good at landing this thing. Uh, it's so heavy I just end up crashing into the ground or I pull too many G's on re-entry and break apart because I try doing some fancy aero braking maneuvers which is not a good idea with this space shuttle because it seems to just break apart the second you go more than 20 degrees away from your um, that little yellow circle that shows the direction that you're actually going so let's get this out on the launch pad and see if I can get it up into orbit Okay, so here it is on the launch pad, and by the way, I forgot, I'm going to show you the cargo that I'm bringing up with me, which is basically just a satellite that I built. Here we go. Four solar panels, and two radiators, four antennas, an engine, that's pretty much it. It's just a typical makeshift fake satellite that we can put up into orbit. And... SAS, we have plenty of RCS, so I'm going to go ahead and turn that on to give us a little bit of extra control. And what do we need here? Alright, so this information I can use so that way I don't have to go look at the map. And let's hit it. Now, you're going to you will want to roll over about 5 or 10 degrees immediately after launch and uh, some of you may know that you would want to be over to the 45 degree marker by 10,000 meters that's actually um, not the case for this shuttle you want to take it about uh, half that speed so everything you normally would do double that altitude so you will want to get a 45 degrees at 20,000 meters uh, instead of 10,000 you just want to slowly progress um, your gravity turn until you get there. And as you accelerate, you're going to want to watch your pitch meter right here. If it starts going down like that, you need to lower the thrust on the thrust limiter on this engine here until it gets closer to the middle. And our SRB is actually about to burn out right here. And when that does, we will want to throw the, lower the thrust even more. See? So let's lower it until we get that closer to the middle. Continue our gravity turn. And things are looking nicely. Alright. Our apoapsis is already at 20,000. We need to. Get uh, it will normally get up to about 86,000 is what I've noticed on a perfect launch. Uh, that's when you dump this tank would be the optimal time then. You should be around 80,000 on your apoapsis. Continue our gravity roll. Hitting 45 degrees at 20,000 meters. Let's check our pitch. Alright. Uh, we actually need a little bit more thrust as it is be going above. You want to increase your thrust. 
now it's actually starting to go back down so let's lower it a little bit more there we go and then at this point I just like to follow this yellow vector here so you get to about 30 or 20 degrees and then you just continue burning until this tank is out of fuel Apoaps, this is already up at 50,000 meters we need to th lower the thrust on this engine a little bit more okay I'll probably keep the nose right here I don't like to drop below 25 to 20,000 or 25 to 20 degrees on the nav ball um, simply because um, I don't always tend to make it into orbit if I do it uh, too horizontally. I need to lower the thrust on this engine just a little bit more. Losing a little bit of control there. Apoapsis is at 70,000. And we are about to lose this stage here and I'm gonna cut the engines just before we run out of fuel on here otherwise we'll start spinning around and cut the engines detach that stage and we will drift up to our apoapsis of 80,000 where we will complete our orbital burn I also have a heavy version of this shuttle that I might make a video of later, uh, but it's still not perfect, so I need to keep upgrading it until it's better. And I'm going to just time warp up to our burn here. And all the way up to the apoapsis. We are in space now. Alright. Hopefully our engines don't overheat. Um, I've had a few cases where the engines actually end up overheating for some reason. It's just only a few times when that happens. And I'm going to try and keep the apoapsis as close to my ship as possible. So when it falls behind you actually want to point your nose up a little bit. And it will actually bring it closer to you. You want to try and keep it as close to your ship as possible while you're doing your orbital burn and you'll get the most circular um, orbit you can get. I just check my engines, make sure they're not about to overheat, which I think they are about to overheat. Probably going to cut them here in a second. Yeah, I'm going to cut them now. And I can complete the rest of this. Turn off my main engines and turn on my orbital maneuver engines and complete the rest of the burn. There we go. We have a circular orbit. And actually, I might raise our orbit because we seem to have quite a bit of fuel left. So I'm gonna do I'm gonna do a quarter of an orbit cool down my engines a little bit and then we will raise our orbit a little bit more before we deploy our satellite let's go right up to about that's good enough All right. let's rotate the shuttle around and do another burn Change our camera. That camera's bugging me. Alright, here we go. Let's raise our orbit up to about 300,000. Oh, that's good enough. Turn off our systems to save electricity. We have solar panels, but I don't know, I just don't trust it. 
Let's get all the way up here. Alright, now let's spin around. Come on. If you want, you can add some more RCS thrusters onto the design. I might do that myself. Here we go. And let's circularize the burn. Circularize the orbit, not the burn. <laughs> there you go. Mostly circular. And let's turn the shuttle around. Because that's how the real space shuttle used to fly. It would fly backwards because they figured that was actually the safest end to be damaged. Because they didn't actually need the engines anymore once they were in space. Well, not the main engines anyways. They still needed their uh, maneuvering engines, which they used to uh, deorbit and such. But they figure the front end of the space shuttle was actually the most important for re-entry. Because they didn't want to damage any of the uh, panels. Alright. So... Let's rotate upwards so that we can get sunlight on our main solar panels. I actually have a little bit of solar panels on the bottom here. But I like to have the solar panels on the top so that way it kind of forces me to turn the spacecraft into the sunlight. There we go. And let's deploy our satellite, shall we? There we go. A couple. And I think it's J? No. L. There we go. And right here is good enough. Alright, three. And there's our satellite. Pretty cool. Um, how much Delta V do I have on this engine here? Make sure my throttle's down. Oh yeah. Duh. Alright, I have two minutes of fuel. Let's see if we can raise this orbit up to probably 500,000. We might get there if we're lucky. Alright, so... Actually, uh, let's get away from the shuttle first. Oops, what am I pressing? There we go. That's probably a safe distance. And let's rotate around. Well, oh, rotating the wrong way. There we go. Let's get around to the periapsis. Whoops. Oh well, that's good enough. <laughs> Alright. And let's go. See if we can get our orbit up to 500,000. Warp to the other side. Whoops. That's close enough, isn't it? 
Alright. Is that the prograde vector? No, it's not. Okay. Let's get the other side up to 500,000. There we go, that's close enough. Oh man. Alright, that's good enough. Let's rotate around. Oh wait, we probably want our solar panels pointed at the sun. And as we go around, I think they will rotate around. So it's probably the optimal position for it right there. Now let's switch back to the space shuttle. Switch to. And let's see if I can re-enter without killing all of the astronauts again, or the Kerbinauts, which I seem to always do because I'm not good at re-entries with space planes. All right, let's see where we are. Let's do one more orbit. Uh, let's wait till the sun comes back up, because I don't like landing in the dark. There we go. Alright. We facing towards retrograde. We are not. I hope I have enough fuel to deorbit. I think I do. But no guarantees. Alright. Deorbit. See if we can aim for the space plane center or runway. Alright, that might be good. I might overshoot it though, because I've I've been overshooting it a lot. And then I try to arrow break because I'm overshooting it. And then when I do that I end up pulling too many G's and I rip the plane to pieces. So I try not to do that this time. If I overshoot, I overshoot, I can try and turn around. Alright, yeah. Just enough fuel for that mission. Ooh, this is actually looking pretty good. I just hope we don't come up short. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna try and speed us up a little. There we go. We had fuel to spare, so why not? Alright. See if I don't kill them this time.
Things are starting to get hot. Don't think I need this information anymore. something. Oh, wait a minute. What was that? Haven't had anything explode on re-entry before. Is it the solar panels on the bottom? That's probably what it is. Yep, they're not there anymore. <laughs> is that the solar panels on the top? Yep. It's the solar panels exploding. I think we're okay. Okay, don't pull too many G's. Their solar panel. Is that all of them? Nope, there's still one more. We're gonna get one more explosion here. Oh, wait a minute. Our engines exploded. Huh. Well, we don't need them. I hope. I don't know if we're gonna make the runway, but we we're get, we're close. Alright, let's see if I can activate this engine. I don't know if it's powerful enough to push this thing, but it will get us closer, that's for sure. Giving it everything I got. Well, I'm out of fuel. Completely out of fuel. I think I better just try and land it in this field, so that way I don't stall it and hit the ground too hard. We're close enough, they can come out here with a truck or something. if I'm gonna be able to pull up here. Oh, shoot. Nope. <laughs> oh. oh, wait. Oh. Well, we got the satellite in orbit, so I guess that part is a success, but we did kill three Kerbinauts. So that part is not a success, but I am not very good on landing anyways. And um, that is the... Uh, gosh, I already forgot the name of it. What is the name of my own shuttle? Well, I don't know. But um, that was my space shuttle, and... Uh, let me know if you liked it, what you think I could improve on it. I will leave a download link in the description if you want to try it out and probably improve on it on yourself. But this is the easy-to-launch space shuttle design that I made. And thanks for watching.